Pencils down, oh. baby. Pencils down. Here we mm. are. Mm. Mm. My mm. God, it's it's time. Everybody. It's time. It's, it's time again. It's that time again. I hope everyone's sitting down for this. Ramble 308. How about that? We made it. Wow. 308 rambles in the game. Look where'd at they, us. Where did they, where'd they call, call us dead? Where did four. they Where did they four. call the time? I'll never four. forget. Four, four. Ramble four, three minutes and 55 seconds in. Like, is they called it. They the experts it. are like, this is not going to happen. No. Nah. And here we are. Huh? Here we are. Um. We, you can you can uh, subscribe to us. Give us a five. We're still stuck at one thirty one. Brian Hill is still the king of the hill. He's gonna, he might be the goat. He might be the goat. This is, might be the longest reigning positive text review we've ever had. Brian Hill, good for you. Thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Bad for us, but good for you. Good for you. So please get those uh, subscribe to us. Five star rating, positive text review. Email us ramble at the ramble pod.com. We're on Twitter at podcast ramble one on Instagram at podcast ramble. We have a T public merch page soon. We're going to have something better than that, but you can still go get shit from that. If you want, you know, no yeah. one's stopping you. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, yeah, we have, uh, we have some, uh, some heavy hearted, uh, emails. The first is Damian Botriel. Bots. Bots. He goes, it's Damien Botriel here in the worst of circumstances. I've been sitting at my computer trying to come up with the words that describe how I'm feeling right now. Imagine, I imagine the rest of the Ramblers are in a similar state of mind. Joe Capone was such a huge portion of the show, be it his yeah. regular email, social media memes, artwork for Twitch and YouTube, etc. It was in early 2020 when everything was going crazy that Jerry started playing old games on Twitch. That hour each day had the calming effect on me during a stressful time. Joe was always there contributing to the random nonsense discussions, dropping the hammer on bots and overall helping the tech illiterate Jerry. Yes, just to keep the stream alive and running. Thanks, Joe, for everything you did for the community. I'm sure I speak for all the Ramblers in saying that Joe will be dearly missed and that this family won't be the same without him. Hashtag kiss still sucks. <laughs> Damien <laughs> Botriel. Like it's it's funny how like like see like seeing a kiss sucks hashtag gets me choked up now because I it's so like it was fun because what would happen, I'd be streaming on Twitch and uh Koi would start shitting on kiss and then joe would stop whatever he was doing to like fire back this guy was, defend kisses honor. yes he He's had to defend to. the honor of the kiss army it was fucking oh it was great well thank you damien for the kind words of course and again um the minute we know of any kind of uh gofundme thing or any um anything uh you know funeral arrangements stuff like that we'll post it on the ramble fan page on facebook yeah um, cause we're obviously going to send flowers and stuff and, you know, we'll let you know how y'all can too. Um, so yeah, here we go. We also have a, a email from Michael Miller. Hey guys, we'll hope all is well. I'd say things aren't too bad at the Miller house. Although Caleb might disagree on the first day of summer vacation. I spent four plus hours with Caleb in the ER. I guess oh, it was with some friends in the woods behind his mother's house. When he went to take a piss, he rolled his ankle on a log or something and lost his balance. He tried to catch himself, but ended up breaking both bones in his right forearm. Oh, with oh. his dick out too. <laughs> with his dick out. Oh, damn. He, he's in the cast right now. Oh, on Tuesday, yesterday, ramble time. If he'll need and there's no way with a broken not. arm you can put your dick away when you're running for help. No, it's just so you're out. running for you're help just, and your arms flailing and your dick is out. But I mean, there is a chance Caleb might have put all of his friends to shame with that dick out. They're That's like, true Whoa. too. It's like who cares? Check I break, I break both. I break arms, both yeah. my arms. <laughs> Look at this Caleb's cock. Right. That's crazy. Jesus. So well, get well, Caleb. Man, yeah, hopefully yeah, he's Caleb. all right. Um. Graham and Faye, greeting from the Great White, no, Great White North fellow Ramblers. Uh, they have a post because uh, this past Monday we had a tribute to Joe Capone on Twitch, on the Twitch channel, The Modern Romantic. Um, and he says, hey, Marla, take a seat. Well, it has to be said that we lost one of our own last week, and I must say the news of Joe Capone's passing was and still is weighing on me as I typed out this entry. Much like I'm sure many of the rambling core, you likely had many other interactions with him via our little tight-knit online community. He was certainly one of the most giving with both his time and talents to the podcast and Twitchers alike. I will miss the endless, amount, endless amounts of high-quality memes that would fill my social yeah. media feeds, which seemed to drop almost effortlessly at the end of each episode of The Ramble. He clearly possessed 
a black belt in Microsoft Paint. <laughs> On the Twitch side of things, he was always in streams moderating and was endlessly entertaining with his commentary, and especially when dropping the moderator hammer on asshats in the chat window. He was a tireless community champion for so many and seemed to always help anyone out with, as I understand, no reward other than seeing his digital friends succeed. You will be missed dearly by the Ramblers. No fucking question. Um, yeah, thank you for that, Graham and Faye. It was, uh, st and I hope I did him justice. Um, Friday, this past Friday on my Twitch stream, in honor of Joe Capone, I played Tecmo Bowl as his, I can't believe I'm saying this, Cody. I was his beloved <laughs> New York Giants. Yeah. I had to play as the Giants, and I did the Joe Capone style where I had the viewers pick the next play I was going to run, and I hope I made Joe Capone proud his New York Giants absolutely rolled Dan Marino and the Dolphins 35 to 13. So it was uh, it was a successful game. And I was telling Eddie, I when you played Tecmo Bowl when it came out, yeah. Bo Jackson was the one everyone talked about. Yeah. And Ronnie Lott was like his antithesis on defense. They were both just but man, I forgot how devastating Lawrence Taylor was in that game. The reason it should have been 35-14, but I, it, was, it was in the second quarter when the Dolphins scored, and I forgot I had Lawrence Taylor. I'm like, wait, he blocks field goals and extra points. Yeah, there's and no just, way you get that field goal, that extra point off. There's no and way. And he just ran. I, oh, yeah, it's got to be him. And he just runs up and blocks it. It was it, He fucking, tackles the holder. <laughs> he tackles the holder. <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking amazing. So, yeah, I hope I did Joe Capone justice. And as Eddie and I, we mentioned on our Ramble tribute to him, it's just like – it's he he was always cared about everybody always wanted to help just so and giving all the it's time. so giving and it's just the one bummer is he could never get over the Kirk cousins hump that's on tech mobile <laughs> that, that, that haunted him his whole life his whole life he could never be cousins Kirk cousins he could never techmo Kirk cousins which techmo. is even worse than real life Kirk <laughs> <laughs> oh man that was uh but yeah so obviously man a million rest in peace Joe Capone yeah. and man it just sucks it's it's uh, he built like I said a lot of our ramble artwork he did a lot of all our, of it basically. all of it all my twitch channel is all his stuff like he oh man it's just fucking yeah it was um but it was nice to do the tribute to him it was I want to thank everybody who was there and it all came to like everyone just yeah, it was very loving it was great and yeah we were all having a blast just cheering on the New York Giants. <laughs> Who was their core? Was that Phil Sims? And that Tecmo, Tecmo game, I, I, I think it was Phil Sims. If it's the original Tecmo Bowl, it was Phil yep. Sims. And guess what happened, Eddie? What? It was twenty. It was uh, twenty-eight to thirteen, and I fucked up the play. And the it was one of the craziest moments in Tecmo Bowl. I fucked up the play. I pressed the wrong button, and the receiver got a cover on him. So Phil Sims ran in for 15 yards out a quarterback no. sneak touchdown it was yes it was wow uh, it was that if, he never did that in real life no if phil sims ran it in <laughs> <laughs> so if that was i hope joe capone was smiling when that happened phil sims running it in from 15 yards out for oh, a touchdown if only could have been dave brown dave brown. <laughs> that would have been fitting for joe capone did hofstetter win a super bowl he won that what the it was because uh, Phil Simms tore his Achilles that year yep, that's in right. 1990, oh. and Hostetler what filled in the rest <laughs> of the season, and they won the Super Bowl wow. with OJ Anderson as the as the running back. God, that was, was the Scott Norwood game. That was he, Norwood, the Super Bowl. Had Phil Simms been there, probably doesn't come down to that because Phil Simms was yeah. a much better quarterback than Hofstetter. They still, I think they still win the Super Bowl that year. They were just that. Yeah. I mean, well, that's they they beat the Niners in the NFC Championship game. Yeah, and the yeah. Niners were going for the three peat. Yeah, that's right. That's and uh, right. that came down to like the last play. I think Roger Craig fumbled. Oh, that's God. The Niners were, I think yes. the Niners were trying to run out the clock, and Roger Craig fumbled. God. And then the Giants ended up winning the game. I believe that's what <sighs> well, happened. Well, that's a dark moment. That's a dark moment right there. Jesus yeah. Christ, that's rough. So, um, Cody, that's a big intro. I think it's music time. All right. And, and if you know the words, this is going to be a long one. I'm warning you. This might take me past the theme song. But. Oh, boy. <laughs> When I picked this one, I forgot just how, how long it takes to get to the chorus. All right. Well, I'm going to start it right now, so get, All right. get started quickly. Eddie, I don't think you're – I think Eddie's going to know this one. Cody, I, I hope I you know, know this one. All right, here we go. 
All right, you ready for this? Oh, the night is my world. City light, painted girl. In the day, nothing matters. It's the night, time that flatters. In the night, no control. Through the wall, something's breaking. Wearing white as you're walking down the street of my soul. Eddie, ring a bell yet? No. How about now? You take myself, you take my self-control. You got me living only for the night. Before the morning comes, the story's told. You take myself, you take my self-control. Another night, another day goes by. I never stop myself to wonder why. You help me to forget to play my role. You take myself, you take my self-control. Here we go. I bump, but up bump. I live among the creatures of the night. Da, da, All right, now I, got it. I haven't now got, I got the it. will to try and fight against a new tomorrow. So I guess I'll just believe it that tomorrow never comes a safe night. Come on, everybody. I'm living in the forest of a dream. I know the night is not as it would seem. I must believe in something. So I'll make myself believe it that this night will never go. Oh, ban, oh. Um, there we go. Eddie, you got it now. Yeah, now I got it. Andre was even dancing. Schmerelson was right behind her, dancing the two of them. In a was, but, was, but was he in her? <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't know. I couldn't tell. <laughs> the way she was moving, I'm going to say, yes, something was inserted. Yes, I'm going to say. <laughs> what? You can't. Oh, she just went, ew. Well, then quit fucking him, maybe. <laughs> Sparrowson's got magic fingers. Yeah, he's got the magic digits of Scotty S. <laughs> Dude, did you have a crush on Laura Branigan, Eddie? I did. That's self control. So, yeah. Eddie, yeah. Cody, did you recognize that song? Laura Branigan, self control. No. That okay? You got to look that motherfucker up. That's a fucking jam of the '80s. And I didn't know this. I remember seeing the music video as a kid and being like, what the fuck is happening right now? That music video apparently was banned from MTV. It was directed by our boy, Big Billy Friedkin of the Exorcist and French Connection fame. William oh, Friedkin really? himself directed that video. And like, there's a scene where she's just walking through like an orgy, but everybody has their clothes on. Right. Remember, she's chasing the guy with right. the mask and the truck. Right, right, right. I'm assuming that's what got it banned. <laughs> What's the orgy scene? There? Was like, the dry humping orgy? <laughs> yeah, the dry hump orgy. The seventh grade orgy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another, but that's a dude. That fucking self control is a fucking jam. You take myself, you take my self control. Oh, 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 oh. Andre, we need you real quick. Do, do you think this is a right that needs to be wrong? So, Cody, if he gets enough subscribers on his podcast, he will qualify to be a Rotten Tomatoes critic. And we're, wa we're wanting to know, should he put... Because right now, Crocodile Dundee 2 is at 9% with critics, <laughs> and Crocodile Dundee Stop. 3 is at 11%. So what we, How we, does 2 get 9%? That's <laughs> what we're wondering. That's what we're wondering. So, But you does... Wow. He doesn't even want to be a part of Rotten Tomatoes anymore. You tell him I said that. Wow. Why is that? Why does he not want to be a part of that? <laughs> because it's a bunch of bullshit. But he can get in and, and fix the but, system. Yeah, I can write she's, wrong. She's so mad at Rotten Tomatoes, Cody. She wants to protect you from even But we can fix of, it from the inside. Wait, here's the question. If he gets in on Rotten Tomatoes, should he bump three even higher? Or does he go and bump two above three? Bump two up. Bump two. Two oh, wow. above two or belongs I could, above or I could, three. The better... <laughs> One well, time, come closer. Oh. That is literally one of the best movies ever made. Hmm. <laughs> the funniest part was yesterday. Eddie and I were remembering how bad Crocodile Dundee Two was, and we're like, "Yeah, doesn't he like dress up like the cartel leader?" And that, and he, they have the cartel leader dress up like him, so the <laughs> henchmen accidentally shoot the cartel leader, and then Andre goes, I, "When we said that ridiculous Three Amigos plotline out loud." She goes, oh, my God, yes, it was so good. Because <laughs> you thought Crocodile Dundee was dead. He's dead and it's so emotional and he's not dead. You guys need to rewatch it. <laughs> Who thinks that Crocodile Dundee is going to be killed in the sequel? <laughs> <laughs> I wish you could have heard Eddie. He had the ultimate mic drop. He goes, Who on earth? 
thinks Crocodile Dundee is going to get killed off in the sequel. <laughs> Who would be dumb enough to believe? <laughs> What kind of bottom are you trying to write into Crocodile Dundee 2 where you kill off Crocodile <laughs> Dundee? The, what kind of bottom are you trying to write into that movie where you kill off Crocodile Dundee? <laughs> <laughs> it's no sense. Whew. No one believes it. Be like, oh my god, they killed Crocodile they Dundee. They killed him off. Wow. In I the guess, sequel. I guess there's no part three to this. PG rated lighthearted comedy. <laughs> I guess they went ahead. And, that's like if they kill off an Olsen twin in one of the Olsen twin movies. Like the Olsen twins go west and like well, some outlaw. It's like if Steve one. Gutenberg died in uh, Police Academy 2 Citizens on Patrol. <laughs> yeah, they kill off <laughs> Steve Gutenberg in Police Academy. <laughs> <laughs> He gets his first assignment, or he gets fir it's first assignment. That's right. First he gets his first, first. and then fucking uh, Bobcat just... Goldwith kills him. <laughs> it's, it's even darker. It's Tackleberry friendly fire. They're like, oh god, <laughs> kill Steve Gutenberg in their first assignment. Oh god. Oh. <laughs> that makes no sense. Worms or dies in Revenge of the Nerds too. Nerds in Paradise. He drowns on the beach. <laughs> yeah, the worms are drowned on the beach. <laughs> he just sees a dead body float up on the beach. <laughs> they all make it to the beach safely. <laughs> his his dead body just comes up. <laughs> oh. And no, Transformers the movie does not count because that was a serious drama. So killing Absolutely. off Optimus Prime was a serious sense. drama. Yep. Killing off Optimus Prime. Anything can happen. The stakes are high. Right. <laughs> you literally just contradicted yourself with your favorite movie. No, I didn't contradict myself with my favorite movie. <laughs> no, because that was... Transformers is a drama. It was a drama, not a comedy. Okay? It wasn't a drama. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cartoons can be dramas. It was a drama. It was a drama. It was a heart wrenching drama. A heart wrenching drama. God Almighty, you out of your fucking mind? The only time death was acceptable in the comedy was was Weekend at Bernie's. Yes. the The only time Eddie said it. The only time death is acceptable in the comedy is the opening scene in Weekend at Bernie's because you set up everything. It sets up the franchise. The whole fucking franchise. <laughs> Crocodile Dundee dies. <laughs> like, with Andre... <laughs> we're, about <to> break up. <laughs> we're, about break. we're about to break up. It's a good thing Schmerlson's already there to help you pack. Anyway, or help me pack. I don't care either way. <laughs> Probably I'm packing, but that's oh. fine. Like, Schmerlson doesn't already have my shit half packed anyway every time he visits. Oh. Um, I yeah I mean yeah imagine with Andrea's logic then weekend at Bernie's too he's like decomposing <laughs> like it's just like he's got fucking like you see half of his skull through his fucking rotted out oh. cheek like oh oh why man he rot in the I don't know why he doesn't rot in the sequels <laughs> the see there she is. <laughs> Oh, God. Because you can't pass a rotting corpse as a live person. Yeah, you can't pass off a rotting corpse as a real dude. <laughs> as a living dude. My God. Oh, God. Andrea. My God. Mm. Okay. Anyway, man. Porky's 2 was really dark when they kill off half the cast. <laughs> <laughs> the opening of Porky's 2. <laughs> where they kill half the cast was... Now I will say the 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 second Ewoks adventure movie is very yes. dark because they, dark. they they wipe out the whole family <laughs> the right family at the beginning gets burned <laughs> right at the beginning by stormtroopers so that is no by this fucking these alien monsters just wipe out the whole family except the little girl <laughs> that is true that was a dark opening darkest moment in Star Wars probably it was woo that was that was dark but honey are we friends again. Wow. All wow. right. Well, this is mm -hmm. I stand by it though. I, I don't think anyone <laughs> should be dumb enough to think they would have killed off Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> you seriously have to watch it now though, or else we're watching it with Eddie and Tracy when they come over. 
Fine. Do you want to watch that when y'all come over? Crocodile no. Dundee 2. No. <laughs> <laughs> Where they, the, he gets some street thugs to break into the cartel's mansion. <laughs> Like, wow. they would all just get machine gunned down instantly. <laughs> right, <laughs> by the cartel. She said, I bet Tracy would like it. She said it defiantly, too. What's going to be funny is we're going to put it on. Oh, Colton. She said she thinks Colton would like it. And we're going to put it on, and after five minutes, Andrea's going to have this. Her face is going to drop like, oh, God, this is a piece of shit. What was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. Can I? All right, look. Here's how we make peace. Can I tell you guys something that I yeah. probably should admit? What? The Backstreet Boys put on a hell of a show. Mm. You told me that, yeah. You I said t- it was. I told it was Cody. I told Cody too. They were and look. They oh, it was weird. They opened with like the the obscure shit. They, it was weird. It was like they they opened. It's like if Pink Floyd opened a show with like shit off like obscured by clouds or metal <laughs> or Adam Hart Mother. You're like, okay, this is cool, but what what is this? And and it was like. Everyone was into it, but it wasn't until like five songs in that they actually played a hit. Ballsy, I thought, of BSB. Ballsy or good showmanship by like just dragging you along. Well, because the pop, Eddie. So it's just like four songs that we're all like, I don't really, I don't think I've heard this one. What's that? And then imagine if you're in that situation. And then out of the blue, song number five, all five Backstreet Boys just go, show me the meaning of being lonely. Boom. It, massive pop. And then it was just Bigger hit. pop than if they opened with that. Andrea, yeah. we need your opinion. Get over here. It, would that have been a bigger, the show me the meaning of being lonely pop that they got, would it have been bigger had they opened the show with it or they did, did they do it at just the right time? She's thinking. She's thinking. I think they could have opened. I think they dropped the ball by opening with. What she was happened. not happy that they opened with the I obscure shit. I was like, oh no, is this, gonna, is this concert going to break my heart? Yeah, she was very upset. She was very. Now oh, you by know the how way, we felt about Crocodile Dundee. Now too. you know how we felt about Crocodile Dundee too. Then he <laughs> says, "Oh God, is this movie going to ruin everything?" <laughs> and they didn't save it like the Backstreet no. Boys saved that show. They saved it with that fucking awesome ending. <laughs> The switcheroo. The bait and switch of Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> so, so, show me the meaning of being a lonely got a huge pop. It re- yeah. And then, I, Audrey, I need some credit. I called the closer and I called yeah. both encores in the order they did it. Whoa. I mean, come on. I think you did. What do you mean, think? Wow. So she was drunk. She <laughs> was, she she was hammered. She was hammered. She was in the back. She no, was backstage. She was backstage. Ahead. She was backstage. Yeah, she was backstage. Schmelson got her backstage passes. You don't want to know what I had to do to get these backstage passes. <laughs> but here you go. Like, so. <laughs> I had to blow some of the downtown boys. <laughs> so they, so they, they the closers. Cody, okay, would young Cody have at all been excited by this? Or no? You, they, you sure. weren't into the... All right, so sure, yeah. I, I, wanted, I wish I could have seen the young Cody pop. So there are two songs from The Closer, one song away from The Closer, uh-huh. and it's, come on, brought the house down. It was because it just, uh, the, 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 the lights dim a little bit after the previous song, and then it's everybody, yeah, it, huge pop. Yeah. And then after that, you're thinking, how is it getting any bigger? And then you are the fire. Bam, I Want It That Way is the closer. They encore with their newest hit, Don't Go Breaking My Heart, and then the final encore fucking larger than life how do you there you, you can't follow that it was incredible the all you people can't you see can't you see huge i mean massive pop so i got to give them credit they and then a big fireworks display they wow. put on a show they okay. put on a show right. Be, backstreet boys they Good for them they, they did it <laughs> those downtown boys are real <laughs> <laughs> those downtown fellers Sure are demanding on how many pricks you got to suck before they give you a I mean, pack. who knew there was 20 people in the band? <laughs> you, you only see five at a time. He's just got jizz on his cheek. <laughs> just covered in shit. 
It's <laughs> just on his shirt. <laughs> those those side street fellows. Are... <laughs> those side street boys sure come a lot. <laughs> I mean, who knew? They had that much jizz. Yeah. He what's that? We're not gonna get Colton kicked out of this. <laughs> 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 so we have, we have <laughs> Schmerls is gonna jizz all over his golden dollar sign chain. Did you know s- <laughs> some of those uptown fellas work the concession stand? I didn't even know. Some of those uptown fellas work the concession stand. So, so, um, so, uh, so, I gotta, Andrea, I love you to pieces, but we have two, we have two things on you, Andrea. Oh. That, two revelations. You really thought Crocodile Dundee died, and you really thought that was a candid photo of Schmerelson with a Hawaiian shirt on, a dollar sign gold necklace, money, oh. and a cigar. Oh. It was a brief moment. It was a, a brief, brief, brief moment. Can I, I, Cody needs in on this though. There was a guy speaking of Schmerelson having to blow the concession guys. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I saw a guy at the wine bar yeah. outside the Hollywood Bowl. A- any, any, come on, it's pretty insane. You send right? me a picture instantly, Cody. I'm going to send you a picture and then I'm going to post it. Okay? okay, but this is, I mean. I, it looked like when I saw the guy. You, you have to convince me it's not what we think it is. Yes, convince me that this isn't Bret Hart and Lex Luger fucking and having a kid. What I just sent you. I just sent you the text right now. You tell me that isn't the perfect 50 50 love child of Bret the Hitman Hart and Lex Luger. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right, right there. For all the ramblers, look at there it is. Had <laughs> Bret Hart. And Lex Luger. <laughs> Fuck the neck. I mean, it's like I had to get a picture. I was like, get the fuck out of here. At first, I thought it was Lex Luger himself. Yeah. And then, like, but I'm like, wait, he looks actually more like Bret Hart. I'm You're like, like oh no, God, that guy's no. that guy's walking. Yeah, that guy. Oh man, <laughs> that's not Lex Luger. That's not Lex. And I'm like, holy shit, that's the both of them. That's Lex Luger <laughs> and, uh, and 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 Brett the Hitman Hart have fucked and had a child, and it's that guy. So there we go. That was – BSB was a hell – I'm telling you. I, that alone was the peak, seeing Brett Hart and Lex Luger's love child. <laughs> Those downtown fellas. <laughs> <laughs> they really are demanding as to how many people you got to have jizz on you before they get a backstage pass. Can I also but here you uh, go, throw honey. One, I mean, one Please. I was going to throw one more into the love child mix. I mean, I think there's a little bit of like modern day David Lee Roth in there too. There, <laughs> there kind of is, isn't there? Holy shit, there is. It is like modern my god. <laughs> He's like the Serpentor. He's like Serpentor but like it's like um, a jizz cocktail a jizz of cock- 90s wrestlers. <laughs> And David and modern David Lee Roth, this guy's like a serpentor of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh. Fuck me, man. There is a little modern David Lee Roth. This guy's got everything. So much DNA was used to make this guy right here to work the concession at the Hollywood And, and Bowl. then they made me get fucked by this uh, Lex Luger looking guy. <laughs> and he didn't want to pull out. He won. He just kept going and going. He, guy, he filled me up. That guy's got a stamina of a racehorse on me. <laughs> anyway, here's your bags. I mean, I've had a train run on me before, but not like that. <laughs> a one-man train. It never ended. <laughs> If this gets Colton expelled, I'm really sorry. <laughs> well, he, that means he would have to bring it up to the school board and then say everything we said about and him. And make him listen to and the make him... <laughs> I don't think he'd want that played in public. <laughs> <laughs> These side street fellows ran a train on me. Even the Christian one. 
<laughs> wasn't opposed. Even, Even the, the QAnon one. The QAnon one was especially rough. He had a lot of anger. <laughs> I mean, I've been hate fucked before, but <laughs> if this was a movie, right when you're done saying that, the camera pans back to a little audio player and Sparrowson's in a boardroom playing. This. <laughs> That's, That's they're all just like, "What the, what fuck, the fuck are you doing? Are you doing?" <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Ugh. Oh, I get, it, it, it's hat time! My God, Ooh. here we are! Okay. <laughs> right. Woo! Mm. <laughs> A what hat would they wear? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Um, I, don't, I didn't tell you this, Eddie, about the oh. Backstreet Boys concert. What? They, uh, yeah, they've been around almost 30 years, the Backstreet Boys, since they okay. first formed as a band, as young teenagers. Okay. You know, getting, okay. And they said, you know, like, hey, when we're, they said it was kind of like when we're starting out. We just covered, we didn't have any original songs of our own. We were just doing songs of like bands we admire, like Jodeci and people right. like that. And uh, Kevin was like, and, and of course, Eddie Pence. But, and th look, the Backstreet Boys are really good at harmonizing. Yeah. But then AJ, they all started laughing. They're like, but we couldn't keep up with Eddie. They were laughing. Like, we tried to harmonize with his, you know, to mimic his harmonica play. Yeah, yeah, but they yeah, were yeah. like, man, we couldn't That's keep pointless. up. Uh, yeah, I also heard yeah. it would have turned them into Backstreet Men, and they weren't right. That <laughs> exactly, that's <laughs> what they can't have. So just put Eddie, just putting it out there. I, I bet you don't realize just how many musicians, you know, you don't you throw never, credit. You never, you. you never realize the people you influence. Right, and that's, it, that's probably a good thing. Yeah, yeah, but it was just thought it was nice that they gave you a yeah, little, very nice, a Thank little you. shout out. Uh, Pat Carruthers, PC, PC. Hey, Hey, Ramblers, is if it isn't too late for TV Butler battle nominations, it sadly is, but he wants Cato from the Green Hornet. That's Bruce Lee. The, who loses? He beats yeah, everybody. That's a ringer. That's Yeah, that's you can't have that. It's bad enough we got Benson in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, as, as much power as I think Belvedere has, he just, uh, Bruce Lee just mops the floor with him. <laughs> Bruce Lee just mops the floor with Mr. Velvet. <laughs> That's like UConn women's basketball. Like, yeah, you just, just what are you going to do? Yeah, yeah, you get them undefeated for like 14 seasons or whatever. Like, come on, you're not going to have that. Like, that's. <laughs> um, he says Hall of Fame hat for Chevy Chase roll. Lots of good choices, but he's going Ty Webb from Caddyshack. Uh, Be the ball. That's yeah. a great one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does Caddyshack count in the franchise plummet? I mean, there's only two, but. My God, the dip from one to two is pretty. I, I think you need three movies to make it a trilogy. It has to be at least a trilogy. I think so. Other, yeah. you know, because you don't have that third shot to try to get it to rectify the shit. Right. You, know, you only have the second one. Police Academy, I think, gave us two solid films, one and two, and then it starts getting bad. What do you I think? thought four was okay. Four Citizens on Patrol had some moments. I thought four was okay. Yeah, that's true. Operation Miami Beach was a disaster. <laughs> and then they went to Russia, I think, and yes, one of them. Yes, the Russian one was bad. Uh, Michael Miller. Mills. Mills. <clears throat> I still don't think uh, Jerry specified movie or TV. I did not. I'm going to cheat a little and say Clark Griswold, National Lampoon's Vacation for movie role, and Pierce Hawthorne on Community for TV role. Yes, Chevy Chase is a dick, but man, when he's on, he's on. There we go. Graham and Faye, a hellish panel, gaudy green, 1979 Ford LTD Country Squire wagon, putters up to the Ramble Hall of Fame Theater, complete with the dead aunt Edna strapped to the, the roof rack. As the gas station wagon, as the station wagon lumbles, lumbers to a halt, the driver's side door opens and abruptly falls to the ground. Clark Griswold, dressed as one of the three amigos, gets out of the car and approaches the podium. He proceeds to give the evil commish the three amigos salute and suddenly tosses off his bedabble sombrero to reveal a UCSS and a Stromo baseball cap underneath. It would appear Fletch does in fact live after all. He's going Fletch. Not oh, bad. Okay. It's a great pick, Graham and Faye. Um, Cody? Did you did you get to do this? Yeah, I'm I'm going Fletch as well. Fletch is a great one. God, because even though the second Fletch movie wasn't that great, he was still super funny in it. Yeah, I thought uh, Eddie. Who was your who was your role? Uh, I mean, I like I enjoy Fletch. I yeah, I enjoyed Ty. Uh, but I when I look at Clark, the first thing that pops in my head is Griswold. Yeah, same thing. I go Clark Griswold because it's it so was... much in the in in pop culture. The yeah. Griswold. 
Family Christmas and all that. Oh, yeah. Griswold. Just tremendous. Yes. I think I have to go Clark Griswold also. But Fletch is great. I would have been upset with a Dusty Bottoms pick, too. Yeah. I wouldn't have been upset with that. You got anything besides Mexican food here is such a great line <laughs> as they're in the middle of Mexico. Um, <clears throat> so you know, for Ramble 309, I'm sorry to do this, guys, but I was inspired. Let's give Skeletor some love. Let's do Ooh. Hall of Fame 90s ska revival band. <laughs> who's, who's on the hat? Oh, my God. <laughs> We're maybe doing it maybe for he'll Steph. pop in with his uh, Hall he of Fame. He might have a pick. I think he's going to have a pick. I don't pick. know that he's going to be able to pick just one. <laughs> that's going to be tough. I mean, he gave Buck09 a shout out. So I don't know how that's. Yeah, that's. there's a lot there. Um, uh, guys, it's open, close, encore time. Oh, my God, okay. we've made it. We've made it. We're here. We're here. Open, close, and encore. Wow. Yeah. I just I take wow. you through the journey. <laughs> it's I really do. I don't know, Cody, I don't want to ask Eddie this, I don't want to embarrass him, but Cody, do you hear new notes every time? Because I do. Maybe I'm crazy. I do, but I also hear the space between the notes. Like, right. like, like, like jazz, right? Right. It's like it's, it's everything. It is fucking crazy. And that, speaking of jazz, Charlie Parker, one of the all time great just musicians of our time. Clint Eastwood made Bird in the 80s where For- Forrest Whitaker played Charlie yeah. Parker. I heard a rumor that Clint Eastwood really wanted to make the Eddie Pence story. Why Why did you say no? Um, it was just a difference in, you know, we're, Clint Eastwood and Clint and I are different people. And right, right. I didn't want Clint telling my story. Okay. I, I haven't agreed with a lot of the stuff he's done lately, and I don't I don't particularly care for the way he shoots a film. <clears throat> okay. He's very budget oriented. Uh-huh. It's right. two takes, and they move forward. They don't. Right. He doesn't really. And my music is very improvisational, and yeah, like, sure, I, I, sure. I don't a lot play a lot of the same notes twice. And he Never is just it. he's a one or two take guy, and he <clears throat> moves on. I would want if someone's telling my story, I want whoever's playing me to really. Yeah get into the harmonica and just right. experiment and find it and then you get the take you but want they're not going to be as good as you either so that's tough that's true too but i mean i could come in and play right but and again pretend i can't have clint calling cut and moving forward when yeah. i like you know okay. we need three more takes of this to find it all right that's hey but it's, it's more of a philosophy <laughs> yeah. clash I, than hey. anything speaking of clint eastwood did you know that he turned down james bond yeah and then he also was going to be Two Face in the 1960s Batman show, but it got canceled before he was going to take. He was going to be Two Face. Oh, that would have been interesting. Clint Eastwood is Two Face. He was all set, and then the show got canceled. That's fucking crazy. But um, Alan Parsons Project, baby, open, close, and encore. <clears throat> PC, <throat> Pat Carruthers. I heard of the band, but I didn't recognize any of their songs from their greatest hits albums. I guess the 70s, 80s prog scene missed me as a kid. That's fine. Michael Miller. Mills? Mills. I know the name, never really listened to the music, so I had to Google this. When you open with games people play, you take it or you leave it. You encore with Eye in the Sky. I mean, you close with Eye in the Sky. Encore with Time. Graham and Faye, my foggy memory only goes back like five minutes at the best of times. Didn't we perhaps already do this? I think we might have. Yet another reason components will be missed, keeping rambling cor- ramble corporate in check. That's true. Absolutely. He says you open with time, you close with I, Robot, Mama Gamma, and then you encore with I in the sky. When suddenly, just before the Ramblers fall completely asleep, there's a huge pyrotechnic explosion. An eight-foot-high Eddie lurches onto the stage, followed by Bruce Dickinson and Iron Ooh. Maiden. With a wail, Bruce Dickinson begins to sing Into the Abyss. It'll, I'll fall the eye of the horus. And they proceed to wake everyone up with Power Slave. Nice. Look at that. Would you like that show, Eddie? I would dig that show. I had him open with Eye in the Sky, <clears throat> close okay. with Games People Play, and then encore with I Wouldn't Want to Be Like You. Right. Cody, did you were able to get the Alan Parsons project in? No, the only one I know is Sirius. That's the only Alan And Parsons now, <laughs> at yeah. Shooting Guard from North Carolina, <laughs> Michael Jordan. Yeah. Bah, 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 bah. You know, on the album, Cody, it leads directly. You, you've heard Eye in the Sky. 
I am the eye in the sky looking at you. I can read your mind. That song leads right into Eye in the Sky in the album. I thought they should have kept that going at Bulls Bulls games. Just they just keep playing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, uh, Eddie, were you able to open close on? I I think you got to open with Sirius. You got to open with that. Then you close with Eye in the Sky. And then Encore, I Wouldn't Want to Be Like You. That's not bad. Uh, Ramble 309, a band that's still kicking right now. They're actually on tour with the most devastating band physically that I knew as a child. Tears for Fears. Garbage. Can we do a garbage open close Encore? That'd be a good one. Um, I think I talked about this, but I'll never forget. When the WNBA, I told you the WA, uh, WNBA thing, right? With garbage? Yeah. When it first so. got announced, they had a commercial and it was the yeah. WNBA logo and it said, We Got Next on NBC. They would run it during the NBA playoffs and it was just an instrumental of Stupid Girl by Garbage. And I'm like, Someone, some asshole put this in there and it went through every, went over everybody's heads. Had to have, right? <laughs> they played Stupid Girl for WNBA promo. Not good. Lovely. Lovely. So garbage. 309. We're also what 90 ska band goes into on the hat, the Hall of Fame for when the Hall of Fame lets the 90 ska revival in. What band (laughs) goes on the hat? What would garbage open close an encore with? And now it's time to read books and play video games. Okay. I'm reading books. I'm playing video games. Bring your pussy over here. We're reading books and playing games. (laughs) Wow. Now, we're going to hate to lift the curtain on Ramble Radio Fridays, but Eddie's going out of town for a high school reunion. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do they have a no harmonica policy or do they encourage it? Because I, I would imagine there's probably a lot of bitter kids still. I was approached yeah. by the committee yeah. if I wanted to partake in a harmonica concert for the for the class of 1992 yeah and i declined and then they're like well do you mind if some of the other people from oh, our music God. class which i wasn't even part of i didn't i don't take play i don't take uh, part in organized music right right some of the people from the music uh, s- section of the school wanted to get together and do a harmonic thing as a tribute to me coming uh, back okay right. and i was like if you do that i'll turn around and leave wow i don't I don't wow. want it to be about me. It's about us. It's about right. the reunions, right. about the class of right. 92, not about me. But then also, don't you think if one of them misses a note, which they, of course, will, that's going to send you through the roof anger-wise? Yeah, and, I mean, that's of course, that's you know secondary to my feelings of like the reunion should be about everybody. It should right. be inclusive, right. not focused right. on me. But then again, if they did do this and someone screwed up, I'm going to blow. Oh, God. I wouldn't want to be there. I'll tell you that. So. Right there. Michael Miller. Mills? Mills. I'm still trying to get 100% on Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze for the Wii U. I'm about 45% finished right now. You got this, Mills. You can do this. I, the Tiger, you can make this happen right here. Graham and Faye, we're still cow poking and swinging katanas here in the Great White North, but I've been inspired by this week's events and have promptly loaded up a Tecmo Super Bowl ROM onto a USB stick and will be firing up MAME for perhaps a Giants versus Cowboys showdown. Ooh. Hashtag go blue. There we go. Hell yeah. Um, I am just got uh, maybe one of the most fun sports games I've ever played in a long time. Mario Strikers Battle League for the Wii, for the Switch just came out. And it is just as fun as Mario Strikers for the GameCube. It is just a complete, it's like, you know, Mario Kart, but soccer. You're just like shooting items at people, beating the shit out of everybody. It's so much fun. That's what I've been playing. Not reading anything right now. Eddie, what are you reading or playing? Um, I'm not reading anything right now. Uh, Actually, I'm reading a couple Star Wars comics right now. There's a Star Wars and there's a Darth Vader series that sort of take place. It's a continuation of what I was reading before. Nice. Where it takes place between... Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi mm. and, the, and the search for Han Solo and being stuck in Carbonite. And Crimson Dawn plays a big part in that. Oh, and, okay. And Kira from the Solo movie. She's back. Big, she's ahead of Crimson Dawn. Yeah. So it's it's interesting. And then you have uh, Poe Dameron's parents who are part of the rebellion are a big part of what's happening in the okay. storyline. It's interesting. And then uh, game-wise, uh, we got the uh, – for the Switch, we got uh, Switch Sports. 
Oh shit! So yeah, how was that? Is that's that fun? fun? It's pretty fun. How many how many different sports are in this one right now? It's not a lot. I know they're supposed to be adding more, I think. But right yeah. now, I think it's like I think you get like bowling, which is fun because you yeah. play you play with everybody whoever logs on. That's like awesome. So you bowling's pretty fun. The badminton, tennis, nice. soccer is pretty fun because it's yeah. like this giant soccer ball and you're just running around like trying to kick this giant soccer. Oh, ball. that's like a Rocket League thing. That's yeah, cool. it's like Rocket that's League. Cool. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. And then uh, I forgot what the other one. Uh, Katana fighting. Oh, shit. Swords. Oh, right. It's a lot like uh, Wii Sports Resort. Yeah, that you was a fun Wii one. Sports that was Resort. a great one. Yeah, Resort A lot of the games are very similar to that. I discouraged a lot of my little... I think Wii Sports Resort had the basketball, too, right? Yes. It's pretty yeah. fun. I was smooth on that one. Oh, yeah. When you get that, when you get the stroke going. Oh, like, baby. Oh, Oof. Oof. It was... Make it rain. Steve Kerr-esque back yeah. in the day. Right and then there. when you can just swat people down. Just, oh, ah. fuck out of here. There we go. Cody, you reading anything? You playing anything? Nah, not at the moment. Uh, just again, stuck in movie mode mostly. Hey, so. That's cool, man. What's what has been the sleeper good movie so far in this screening season? What has been the oh that man hasn't been Jurassic World domination? Right, sure. right. Uh, I would go with the Northman. I think that was probably that, and that's on big, Peacock now, right? It's on Peacock now. I yeah. have to watch that. It's really and good. That's cool. That's from the what else did that guy done? He's done The Witch that's and he right. did uh, the, uh, the Lighthouse. Oh yeah, was how was that one? The Lighthouse. Um, I don't, I don't love it as a movie, but the acting in it is like incredible. So nice. it's it's worth seeing for the acting. It's just not really. Is it one of those Cthulhu type things? Not really. No. Oh, okay. It's okay. just about two guys kind of in a lighthouse going crazy, basically. Oh, uh, okay. Okay. Interesting. All right, I do want to see the Northman big time. It's really good. Um. Yeah. Well, it, guys, we've made it. It's mm. the top five. Can you believe it? Here I can't do it. It's the time of the show where we rank the top five. <laughs> yeah. Look, I know you don't like the compliments, Eddie, the praise, but it's. That's I don't know why to I be, do it. I know, I know. I don't mean to be mean, though, but you hear that, and it's just, it's. It sounds easy, right? But that that's, that and, that's and the magic of it and right and you hear people try to thinking oh I got that and it's rough you well, know what you, I mean you see it on their face too when they pick up the harmonica and right. then they blow that first note and then you see the realization just wash over <laughs> oh, their face of like this. where do I go now <laughs> right 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 it's but, just uh, oh you know. man it's I don't know how this is at your guitar center Cody but the one here in the valley. Mm -hmm. They will kick you out if you try to play any of Eddie's harmonica. Like, it's not even really like they don't care if you try to play Stairway to Heaven or you try to play, uh, you know, any Zeppelin or an ACDC riff and you fuck it up. They don't yeah. really care. Yeah. But if you try to play Eddie's, ooh, mm. it's the manager is huh. called and it's it's heavy reprimanding. And it's like you do this again. You're never allowed back in. Wow. I don't, I don't know if you knew that, Eddie. I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah. that. But yeah. I'm glad they're doing that. Yeah. I mean, it's. It's uh, it's very interesting. Um, we're gonna start with PC Patrick Brothers. This is a tough list, man. Top five TV cartoon villains. I'm assuming Cody's is gonna be radically different than Eddie's and I's because <laughs> we will not match up any. I'm gonna I'm guessing because uh, uh, Cody had a whole nother thing. But from da uh, Pat Brothers picks Baron von Greenback as number five from Danger Mouse, I believe. Okay. Uh, Doctor Claw from Inspector Gadget at number four. Claw. Mumra from the Thundercats at number three. Okay. okay. Uh, the Rambles' very own Skeletor from He Man and the Masters Universe at number two, and number one Cobra Commander. Ah, Go yes. Big Blue, Pat Carruthers. Thank you for that. Michael Miller. Honorable mention goes to him from Powerpuff Girls. He's a feminine devil with crab hands, a tutu, and that wonderful eerie voice. What's not to love? Honorable mention also goes to Plankton from Sp SpongeBob SquarePants. Poor Plankton. He just wants to make his struggling small business better. Number five, he's going to go Simon Barr, Sinistar from Underdog. You really have to respect the mad scientist skills of Underdog's number one villain. Plus, he's got the whole Simon Says catchphrase, which never gets old. Number four, our very own Skeletor from He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. As we uh, week in and week out, Skeletor is an absolute incompetent prick, but what a great-looking character design. 
Number three, Cobra Commander from G.I. Joe, a real American hero. Another really great character design for another completely incompetent villain. But as we've seen in his recent short films, deep down, Cobra <laughs> Commander's just struggling to be a better father. Number two, Mojo Jojo from the Powerpuff Girls. Easily the greatest villain in Townsville. What else can I say? People love monkeys, right? And the number one from Star Wars Rebels, Darth Vader. Ooh. Come on, if there's a top five villains list, Vader should automatically be at the top. Other than Hitler and maybe Jesus Christ, is really a greater villain than Darth Vader? No, no, there isn't. <laughs> so sorry to hear about the loss of Joe Capone. I only had a few interactions with him, mostly about Kiss, but he seemed like a really nice, funny <clears throat> guy. My thoughts go out to his family and friends. So I want to say I love you guys. I'm so thankful for what you do. Even Cody, when he's there, take care, everybody. See you next week. Bye. Thank you, Michael Miller. Love you, too. Thank you for the kind words about Joe as well. Um, look, man, Cody's got day baseball sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, day baseball. We, he said that when he joined up. He's like, guys, priorities day baseball. Day baseball. Yeah, Number it's not one. like I'm springing this on yeah, him. Yeah, I right. knew no. what you were getting yeah. into. That was part of the intense contract negotiations. Yeah. And and he and you know he also, and that's Cody. I hate to to, to out this, but Ricky Schroeder came to Cody when he would want to help Kyle Rittenhouse out with money. Yeah. Yeah. He's got a lot of hats he wears. Yeah. So and, and look, here's the thing is that when I was on ten day contracts, it's because I refused to give up day baseball. And that <laughs> right. Was, right. That was what the demand was and i was like i just can't i can't yeah. do it it's cody's finally... doing us the favor by being here so yes. as soon as yeah. everyone realizes that y'all can get maybe maybe it'll be easier i mean he finally worked it out with jack and marley ramble corporate yeah. and it, it, it's i think we're all okay i mean now. he we were this close to losing him to diamond and silk so we yeah. were this close <laughs> he, was, he was gonna be on diamond and Silk's <laughs> podcast we were so close <laughs> But he, he picked us, so we got to be happy with what we got. I couldn't believe it because we're politically the polar opposites of Diamond and Silk. <laughs> so I'm very, uh, very happy, Cody. Well, I think us. he didn't want his voice just drowned out at the noise. Right. The noise. Here right. he, he stands out. <laughs> Diamond and Silk. <laughs> um, Graham and Faye, top five car TV cartoon villains. <laughs> with this week, we get a further insight into the ongoings of the Ramble Corporate with a window into the program director. Andrea's directive, mad with power. All I can hope for is that she remembers just who sends her old Dutch ketchup chips. That's right. By the way, speaking of suggestions, I can't quite recall who suggested it on Retro Road to Twitch stream. Oh, th that's next, Graham. That is next. So I'm going to uh, let's let's go ahead and and let everyone know what next week's top five is going to be, because uh, I talked about this with uh, my man Anthony on on the Twitch stream, and he goes, I can't quite recall, but I think best songs from horrible movies would be a fun top five category for the Ramblers to seek into. I in the example I gave was Saint Elmo's Fire is a terrible movie, but gonna be a man in motion all it needs is said of we is a great fucking song so that's kind of what we mean like what song well, written the, what's the final song for uh, cobra when you're driving away yeah the the beaver brown band that's song, a great right? song. that's a great song in a shitty fucking movie cody what would make we have any you have any you can throw out there right now god i'm really trying to think here um do we dare say Top Gun's a shitty movie? And I mean, Danger yeah, Zone, I mean, Danger Zone's Danger not a Zone bad is one. Up there, Add it. and even the Take Playing My the Breath <laughs> Away, right? And even the Berlin song, the bow, 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 yeah. bow, That's well, that look, what about the whole cocktail soundtrack? Cocktail in that Kokomo? Yeah, there's a place called Kokomo. Because that's I mean, a shitty movie. That's a shitty movie. What will what we will not accept is Take Me Back to Paradise because Revenge of the Nerds two. Right. Or it, you've got it, the touch. Tremendous movie, tremendous you've song. You've got the power. Tremendous movie. And, and back to Revenge of the Nerds 2, Nerds in Paradise is a brilliant song and a brilliant movie. Well, and so better than be, the first. There's yeah. got to be great Bond themes to shitty Bond movies, too. Uh, right? View to a Kill. Yeah. View to a Kill. That was Dance into the Fire. You know what view else? View to a Kill might be the best Bond song of all the Bond movies. And a shitty movie. And the sh and maybe the one of the worst Bond worst movies. Worst Bond movies is View to a Kill. You know what else I think is up there, too, was... Uh, oh, shit. I just had it, and I blanked. Um, fuck. Oh, uh, mannequin we can build this the thing together, together. Mm -hmm. standing Stand strong, strong forever. Forever. mannequin fucking sucks nothing's gonna stop that was a fucking great fucking song i mean i there's this is gonna be a tough boy that's a great one i don't envy the ramblers man i don't envy the mm -hmm. ramblers at all mm -hmm. do we count lou reed's cover of soul man for the movie soul man do we do that or or guys 
I'm going to say it. Rocky Four was a terrible movie. But you know what it gave us? Living in America. Bum, ba, dum, bum, ba, ta, ta. I mean, I don't know. It's mm. whew, Rocky <laughs> Rocky three, not the greatest movie. I the tiger. I mean, yeah. this is who um, when people isn't think it? of Rocky, they think of I the tiger before they think of the actual Rocky. Thing. And thump, bump, you think I the tiger. I mean, man, it's God. It's uh, I wish I want to. I should get my buddy Vince on just so he can do Stallone when Mickey dies. I would sometimes wake up and th- there was a voicemail and it was just Vince and he was just he would just do that and then hang up. He would just be like, "Me, me, I don't want to That's basically Stallone when Mickey dies and Rocky. I don't want to me. It's so bad. <laughs> Uh, oh, wait a minute. Yep. Is G.I. Joe the movie a good movie or a bad movie? <laughs> because it did give us crashing through the sky Ooh. comes the fearful cry. Cobra. Bra. Cobra. Cobra. <laughs> it's tough. And so it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a good top five. Uh, Graham, and he goes, anywho, back to Ramble Business number five. Another one, Dr. Claw. I'll get you next time, Gadget. Gadget. Aku from Samurai Jack. Fool, no mortal can hurt the great Aku. Mr. Burns from The Simpsons with the excellent. Ah, the Joker excellent. from the Batman animated series. I'm crazy enough to take on Batman, but the IRS, no thank you. And then the Lochnar from Heavy Metal. I am the sum of all evils. Who can forget the B-17 Flying Fortress story? Ooh, good story. Lastly, speaking of which, should any Ramblers be a fan of heavy metal and the associated anthologies, you have to check out Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix. It's basically three seasons thus far of digital heavy metal shorts. Stay safe, Ramblers. Rest in peace, Joe Capone. Ramble off, Graham and Faye, Winnipeg A. There we go. Not bad. So next Ramble, 309. The best song written for a bad movie. (laughs) Uh, What would um, garbage open, close, and encore with and... The 90s ska revival goes into the ska hall of fame. What band is on their hat? Mm. And now we do top five cartoon villains. Man, uh, Cody, did you get to, did you get to do this one? I didn't have enough. I wish I would have, but I didn't have enough time to to take a look. <laughs> Eddie, who's your number five? Number five, uh, the Monarch from Venture Brothers. Oh, that's a good one. I the I Monarch! went I went Gargamel from oh, the Smurfs. Okay. Gargamel. Who's your number four? My number four, I would go Skeletor, number four. That is my number four as well. The Ramble Zone Skeletor, number four. Uh, Who's your number three? My number three, uh, Cobra Commander. Oh, that was my number two. My number three, Megatron. Oh, that's my number two. Look at that. Megatron. Your number one. My number one, because of his name. His name is what put it over the top for me, because I was a huge fan of this cartoon in the mid-late 80s, Mask. Uh, oh, Miles, yeah. Miles Mayhem. Miles Mayhem. That's a great one. That that's a great, great villain name. <laughs> Miles Mayhem. My number one, who else could it be? I had to go Starscream because he oh. was not only a villain to the Autobots, but the Decepticons, yeah. too. He was on nobody's team. He was on no one's team but his own. That's yeah. why I got to go Starscream right there. What a list. Yeah. My God, what a ramble. We did it, gang. Ramble 308 in the books. 309 now ready to go get those emails in uh i want you all to have a great rest of the week and we'll see you friday for another ramble radio and that's it we love you guys stay safe everybody take care